Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm trying to get some of these dells up and running and I already ran into the first little issue which I'll bring you to see in just a second uh, the idea was that I wanted to get rid of these dells these are the 2950s they're power edge and I have two of them this is the model 2 and another two is the model 3 I didn't really know that last time but I found out doing the editing that I had two different models and that was why there was strange things going on inside. There was a USB connection in one of them and that was not in the other one and it seems that the Model 3 comes with a, with a USB connection for booting on USB from inside of the machine and the Model 2 did not. Right now I've powered this one up and I was going to, I was actually just gonna see what I had on there because I have had this oven running before, before the lightning strike. I have already run into some memory issues and right now I'm pretty irritated why I put that on the bottom because now I have to open it up and I have to remove the three other servers before I can do that. But let's go to the screen and see what I got. The system started to boot and it, it sees the two new processors, the two gigahertz, dual cores, which is not new processors, which are pretty old processors, but they're in there. And it sees the four memory dims that I put in there, but it says that number three and number four is not of the same kind and it won't run with that, so it has halted my system. So I have to remove the top servers and get in there and see what I did. Let's take the cover off and see what kind of bad memory I've put into this one. I have disconnected the power. Okay. Seems I put it in the right order. This should be number three and number four. So that's the ones that they're complaining about. So I'm gonna take those out. Yeah, they're not exactly alike. So we're gonna try and put in two others. I have these two. They're also IBM branded. IBM, the big blue. And they look to be more alike. Yeah, they're the same type. So let's try and put those in. Okay, it's powering up. It's loud. I think this has to do with it only having one power supply. It's not really happy about that. Okay, it's just 4 gigabytes of memory and the two processors and now it's continuing uh, it though says the memory size has changed it has an IP number 212 in the front down here it has two hot drives let's see if it boots those I'm not gonna boot through network so I'm just gonna cancel that doesn't seem like it want to boot on the hot drive. Well, I found my way into the BIOS of this thing, uh, which really wasn't hard. But it seems that in the boot sequence here, the hot drives are not even in there. So that's probably why it won't boot. Okay. Need to find out why it's not seeing the RAID controller. In the integrated device, it should be there, but it's not turning up. So we probably have to reboot the system again. Same changes, yes, I haven't done anything. But well, I turned it off again because it seems like it can't see the RAID controller at all. So let's go see the RAID controller. The RAID controller is right here. And it unplugs as far as, far as I know. So well, well, let's unplug some of this. Take the RAID controller off for a little bit. Well, I'm gonna try and yell over this, but after having it open and taking out the RAID controller and putting it back in, it's now saying that there is an error on CPU number one. It comes right after this. CPU one I error or something like that. So, well, I can 
take it apart again and try once more. Okay, I've opened up and I'm just gonna check the CPU. I have to disconnect the power. Just gonna check if everything is fine. Can't see anything that should be interfering with anything, so it's probably just the whole system that is fucked. Let's put this back in. See what it comes up with. Oh, it has a rate controller. And it's complaining about the battery. And it shows us something with the discs. That was because I pressed Control R to get into the menu. We have one disc with disc zero, so let's just go out again. Let's see. Go out. Yeah. So it quit. And press Ctrl Alt Delete to reboot. Let's see if it can boot. It's loading VMware. Okay, 4.1. Yeah, haven't had this turned on since then. It has a static IP number, number 223. So let's see if there's anything on there that I need to remove before selling this server. Well, I tried to add it to my VMware environment through the vCenter thing. And it just says that the ESXi 4.1.0 is too old or it's not supported at least. So we'll have to try and go into it itself. Cancel that, minimize. Let's see if the client that itself will do it oh it seems to be doing something we'll just do this one no um ah, ah we're not gonna do that cancel ah damn it wants to install a new version of vSphere client that is compatible with 4.1 i don't want to ruin my good 5.5 slash 6 here. Guess we'll just have to delete everything on there and install something new. I have a little USB stick here and that should be the installation of a 6.0 version of ESXi. So we're gonna try that. And we're gonna boot the server. Well, I switched out the boot device because it didn't, it didn't show up. And I put this one in and it still didn't show up. I'm just gonna show you what magical stuff this server does. Here is the boot menu and there is, as you can see, no USB devices. That is until you go down to drive C. And then there is suddenly something here on drive C. And there is a front USB hiding away underneath there. So probably the first one I put in there would have worked just as fine. We're gonna select that one and it boots. ESXi 6.0. So let's install that one. And maybe we get the options to upgrade. I'm gonna have a look out for that one. That would be fun. Well, that took a while. I do believe that this USB stick might not be the fastest one in the world. So we're gonna continue here. And we're gonna be accepting the license agreement thinky. And well, this takes more than a few seconds. Oh, it was actually pretty quick. Weird thing that it shows the USB stick down here, but well, 
Okay, we're gonna be installing on that one. That's apparently the internal rate controller. The one that just popped up was missing for a while. And we can, what can we do here? We can install ESXi for bent. Let's try that one. We're gonna keep the data store as it is. Let's try that. Uh, we're just gonna go with Danish. Is that Danish? <laughs> and I'm gonna give it a password. Enter. Okay, it pops up with something here. I've never seen that before, but it says that um, I have to upgrade the volumes from inside the WebSphere web client. Well, I don't care about that volume. We're just gonna continue and we're gonna install. I don't know if it just deleted the volume or if I can go upgrade it later and still see what's on there, but it doesn't matter that much. It completed that and now it wants to reboot and I can probably remove the USB stick now so I'm gonna do that. Enter for reboot, remove the USB stick, my trusty old half gigabyte USB stick, 512 megabytes and we're gonna wait until it boots. Okay, so far so good. It's not complaining a lot even though it only has 4 gigabytes of RAM which is the absolute minimum I think. It should be online in just a second or two, okay. And it got an IP number from my DHCP server, so that's good. So let's go to the computer and see if it want to get in there now. I punched in the IP number, let's see. No, no. It's connecting, it's coming in. We have 60 days, okay. And it does not have a data, s well it actually does have a data store. Well, please consider upgrading the data store, okay? Can we do that? Let's go to the data store. Store. Not supported. And boom, boom, boom. Upgrade down here. Let's upgrade it, yes. In progress. I don't know how long this will take, but it really didn't take long. Okay, apparently it's upgraded. So let's go back and browse data store. Oh, I have a couple of machines here. Have some have some render servers that I've put on here way back. Wonder how old they are. It seems like that I've done that in 2011. So it's five years back that I played with this server the last 24th of March was the last time this has been updated. So that's probably when this thing, no, no, that was later. Let's see what dates this say, nothing later than that. There's a couple of render servers. They don't need to be there, but I'll just delete those. I don't need those. Well, actually just for the fun of it, I think I will import these. Uh, if you've never tried this before, you go into the data store and you have your machine here. All, all of the machine is maintained or kept in one directory and it has a VMX file. And if you right click the VMX files, you can add it to inventory, rich. And it will yeah, come out with a name, the name that it was given when it was made way back. You just press next and on that host, yes, please finish. I will just do the same thing with the number 8 here. And that one and that one and finish. And then we have suddenly we have two virtual machines here. So let's power on one of these and see what happens. This should be a Windows XP 40 64 bit for 3D Studio Max rendering. So let's see what pops up. Yeah, that boots just fine. Here we are. And well, it probably connects to the render manager, maybe? Not really. Something has changed. That's probably not working. Well, at least one of them is working right now. I have only been working on this one. So that one is ready to get shipped out of here. So I'll be working on the next tree and I won't bother you with that. But well, one server down, tree to go. Thank you for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye, they really are pretty loud.